So this one's going to be a bit different, a bit of a strange one. Um, it was actually suggested by a friend of mine. Um, the old Triumph has been sat in the garage for quite a while and it's had very little use over the last year or so. Uh, so I'm going to get it out of the garage, going to give it a wash, give it a clean up, give you guys a bit of a walk round and uh, see if we can take it for a bit of a drive. Um, not far because we're still locked down. Uh, so let's go into the garage and uh, get it out. Oh, let's go in. I haven't really done any of this vlog, vlog style videoing before so this one's going to be new on me. <sighs> There's poor old thing. She sat here and uh, not moved since the end of the last video. Um, let's open her up, get her out, get her out of the garage. Okay, let's get the door open. Place is becoming a mess. It's really busy out here now. Trying to get the hang of this filming business is not easy, um, but it's ain't different. I'm quite enjoying it at the moment. Hope you're enjoying what we're putting up. All right, let's get this uh, car pushed out, and I'm not going to start it because I don't want to foul the plugs up any more than they already are. Um, to put you down for a minute. There she is out in the sunshine, in all her dusty, shabby glory. State of the inside, it's not good. And you see, I've just, just been neglecting it, really. It's picked up a couple of bits of damage. It's just, poor thing. Job number one, if we're gonna give it a wash, we need to get the roof up. Roof's on, let's start getting the washing gear out. There we go, she's looking a bit better now. You can see a bit of the sort of shininess in the paint. She doesn't look horrendous anymore. Although you can still see all the scratches and all the marks, but um, yeah, it's not too bad. That'll do. Let's get the roof off and show you guys around a bit. So here we go for a little bit of a walk around in my old car. Uh, I've had the car since 2005. I bought it as a complete scrapper. I'm going to throw in a little bit, a few photos and things so you can see what I started off with. As you 
basically been built up out of spare parts, scrap bits, bits off of eBay, bit of this, bit of that. And it's just a bit of fun. The door cards that came with the car had already been wrecked. Um, they'd been cut about, faded, cut, then recovered in some really nasty pale grey vinyl. So these are handmade, um, completely scratch built. The only things are the, the hardware that are original to the Triumph. The door handle, the pull handle and the winder. Um, everything else is all scratch built. That I'm using as an interior light is um, a number plate light. One of the ones where you have a little bolt and an LED that sticks out the bottom. They're quite effective, they're pretty good. Didn't like any of the options I could find for um, uh, door mirrors. So I went for this hot rod style peep mirror that just goes on the, um, the glass there. Uh, it does the job, it actually gives a really good view to the back as well, especially with the top off. You can see really, really well. Um, I've never got around to doing anything on the passenger side, but this one works okay. Uh, it looks alright. It's never fallen off. Unfortunately, this door is deteriorating rapidly. Getting a lot of problems with rust bubbling along the bottom. And the, uh, the door frame itself really isn't worth repairing. Uh, so I'm going to have to try and find a second hand door. There are a few people I can make phone calls for for that. Just think I've not got around to yet. Going inside. Uh, that's not a name you normally see associated with British cars, is it? See if we can straighten that up a bit. Uh, a friend of mine donated the steering wheel. I managed to find a boss that would fit and mount it up. Uh, it's much nicer than the original wheel or the uh, TR8 wheel that I had on there for a bit. Um, it's a really nice wheel. Um, unfortunately, all these fabrics were supposed to be black. You can kind of see it's still quite dark there. Um, the sun has bleached them really badly. So one of the projects I'm going to got coming up is I'm going to try and find something that I like to retrim some of these bits. And it's the same stuff here, and look at it; it's just destroyed. Um, I think it wasn't didn't go so badly, although it needs finishing with these gauge pods I made. I'm quite happy with those. Piece of two-inch pipe stuck on. I've got an air fuel ratio and an oil pressure gauge. Uh, I don't like the oil pressure gauge. I don't trust it as well. It reads very low. Um, but there again it could just be that the engine's very low on oil pressure. Uh, I did used to have a radio in the glove box. Um, unfortunately my old Kenwood Mask mini disc head unit died. Uh, I need to get a new ribbon cable for the screen. Um, after lockdown, I think I'm going to save up and get one of those done because I'd really like to get that back in this car. Uh, in the meantime, I've got this which I found on Amazon. Um, it's a Lanzar graphic thing. I don't even know what to call it really, it's not an amplifier. Um, but it takes a Bluetooth input as well as uh, a pair of line inputs. Gives you control over your sound and um, outputs to an amplifier, which is pretty good. I swapped out the um, cigarette lighter socket for a USB charger, which works pretty well. Um, I have got kind of hidden away up here. This is something I did years ago when I first got the car. There's a little seven inch monitor up here. Fortunately, everything that I used to plug into it died or failed. So there's nothing actually um, plugged into it. It's just there, it still works. It's just got uh, nothing to show. Uh, the speakers are uh, my old infinity um, probably five and a quarter inch mids um, and a pair of one inch infinity tweeters um, the mids themselves date from around about 1996 i think had them in my second car and i just keep moving them around they've been in so many cars uh, the infinity tweeters are slightly newer but maybe by a year or two. Um, they've been in everything. Moving to the back, I'll open up the boot. Uh, it's just been used a lot for the camera storage gear from I'm filming this channel with. But there's another Infinity subwoofer, Kappa series. Um, I've actually got a 12 inch one of these as well. Uh, I 
really quite like them. They, they are very old though. Uh, my 12 inch K was an original that I bought back in the 90s. Um, this one I managed to find on eBay a bit later on, quite cheap. Um, they sound good, moves enough air, sounds okay in here. Quite pleased with it. Um, I did have an original long mill amp, which I'll dig out in a minute just to show you, which was the same vintage, um, 1995 I think on that one. Uh, unfortunately it developed a fault last year and kept blowing fuses. So I dug this out of my collection. Um, a work colleague gave me this, and I think he's watched a couple of these videos, so he might be sitting there stabbing at the screen going, that was mine! Um, yeah, it's, uh, it makes reasonable noise, does the job, fills a hole. Um, no complaints, so thanks John, thanks for donation on that. Uh, I made a little, there's my fuse holder there, the cover is in there somewhere, I don't usually run it without a cover on. Um, and you can see the key for the alloy wheel there. Neat little clip I made up. Speaking of the wheels, they're rather nice. Uh, an eBay find in 2005. Unfortunately, the old Pirelli tyres are looking a bit cracked and worn now. I think they, uh, they're due for the scrapyard before they do any more real distance in the thing. I'll keep it off the ground for now until uh, quarantine ends. Now, something that makes it a bit more interesting, let's have a look under the bonnet. Let's see the water still dripping off. There we go, this is the bit that's actually different from standard, really. Uh, this is a Triumph Dolomite Sprint 16 valve engine from the mid 70s. So it's actually older than the car. Uh, it's kind of a unique engine. One of the first mass produced four valve Persunder engines for just the regular domestic market. It was originally slated to go in production as part of the TR7 but uh, due to various industrial actions and issues with factories and management, um, it never actually made it into production. Only the prototypes were built. Produces allegedly about 128 horsepower originally. Um, with, in this, I should think, with a decent exhaust system on it, it's probably a little bit more. Although, having said that, it's a little tired and worn, so I don't know, could be quite a lot less actually. Um, I'm using a, an MSD ignition booster on it. That's the sort of thing you normally would only find on a V8, but uh, actually works really well on this. Wakes the whole engine up, makes starting easier, she runs better, and uh, gives me a two-step um, ignition control. So yeah, I can do the poppy bangy noises. Not very exciting actually. Yeah, I know it's kind of hard to see. But that's a proper custom built coilover conversion. Another eBay find. Unfortunately, after having bought them, got them home, fitted them to the car, found that both front legs were actually bent. So I had to rebuild them onto my original legs. But it does include the uh, Capri vented discs on the front for a 2.8 V6 Capri, which give it a lot better brakes and stopping power. Okay, let's see if it's gonna start. So choke out, clutch in, we've got ignition lights, something's going on.
not bad. It's been a few weeks, a few weeks since the last runner up, so can't complain at that. Well that's all for now, thanks for coming with me on this little tour of my car, I hope you enjoyed it. There's lots of plans to do, sorting out that interior, uh, some engine mods uh, and trying to tidy up some of that paintwork. So there's lots of things that will keep me busy, but after owning the car for 15 years, um, I've done a lot and some of these things take time. Um, but hopefully I can make some more videos with this car in, uh, Matthew will give me a hand and we'll produce some more stuff for you to enjoy. So thanks for coming along. Uh, thanks to everyone who subscribed, and watched my videos, really appreciate it. And hopefully I can continue to produce some content to keep you amused during the lockdown period and while we're uh, getting over this coronavirus. Um, so stay safe, stay at home, and uh, we will catch you all again soon. Take care.